Great. So this is unit three, and or unit four rather. You know, we're into cloud security and querying NoSQL databases. I want to go through the first example um, that will get you kind of back to JavaScript, and I want to talk about how to weave together the Facebook element and the the Amazon element, and kind of get you ready for that as you go forward. I have a sense like we're going to give this lecture a couple times. But we're going to give the first one just to get it out there, just get you used to it. Because, you know, the uh, JavaScript's a big piece of it, and sometimes seeing the code will help you to put it together. Y'all are smart. You know, we should show you the kind of the, you know, the meat and potatoes. So here is the query core. That's going to be the first file that you're going to use. First move, you're going to grab the Amazon JavaScript SDK. I forget how big it is. I think it's like 500 kilobytes. It's extremely um, economical. It will not slow your website down. And the truth of it is, is because you're using the serverless website, you are cutting out a whole expensive, time-consuming, relatively vulnerable part of your server. So your users are going to get data a lot faster than if you were to be using a PHP or a you know a Java. You know, it's just fundamentally faster, fundamentally more secure. The other piece is you're getting the Facebook. SDK. And as you, you know, kind of wind through uh, Facebook, um, they're going to teach you how to use that. But I'm going to show that to you too. Um, so let's, let's go back to, so now that you've got these two script includes, this is brand new for you, you need to do these both and you just copy and paste that at the top. Every time you run your code, it's going to download that SDK, which is fine. It's almost better that you get the SDK from Amazon every time you load the page than if you keep it in your own cloud, because it will reduce the server uh, pressure on your own uh, bucket. And Facebook, you know, these are billion, you know, they're worth like $250 billion. Like just allow Facebook to host, you know, the, Java, the JavaScript SDK for you. Now that's going to pay you back later. If you go down to the bottom of this, this is going to be some boilerplate code that Amazon is going to give you that will help you to connect with your um, with Facebook and get the authentication token from Facebook. And this is going to be some boilerplate code that Facebook gives you that you're not going to have to change. And so that's going to exist at the bottom. What's going to happen is if you're not logged in, um, Facebook will ask you to issue your username and password using what's called an, an asynchronous window. And uh, Facebook is going to be initialized using your app ID that you're going to set uh, at the top. So you're going to offer your app ID here, and then you're going to offer your role ARN, which is what came from your IAM. This is your role ARN right there. So you're going to copy paste that once you have that um, finished right at the top of your HTML. Now the HTML we did here is going to be very similar to the HTML that you've been doing this far, where there's just a, a body. Very there's going to be a button. The button is going to is going to trigger the Facebook login, and you can see the ID is called login. And then the other button here is going to trigger the query of the database. It's going to be called do query. And then we're going to have a div for the, uh, the output. And then we have a div here, which you're not going to work with. Facebook is going to fill up this div with all sorts of authentication information that will blow your mind at how complex it is. So go ahead when you're, when you're looking at your, um, your elements here. Get your body. And this is your FB root. You're like, wait, I didn't code this. Facebook fills it up with fascinating material right here in your FB root. But your output, your, uh, your output is what you're eventually going to have uh, filled up. Great. And we'll, we'll throw this here in a minute. Again, all we're doing right now is we're just laying the pieces out. We're not expecting you to just code right away. All we're doing is just we're kind of setting the chessboard in this talk. So you know you got a login button and you have a, a, a query button, you have an out, a space for output. Now you guys can go down here a little bit. You can see that when you get some of the output, 
you're going to do a for each, and you're just going to kind of um, output, you know, what comes back. And in the Dynamo, you can see that I've made a couple of of same uh, partition keys right here. So you'll have a bunch of lines that will come back. And you can set up your table like me. And so what I do is I set up um, a get element by ID on the do query where I say on the click, I want to run this function. First of all, you're going to use the AWS from this J, this SDK, and you're going to declare a DynamoDB object that will point to the US West 2, which is where I made my bucket. And then um, you're going to be using what's called a document client. A document client is a very efficient, very low-key way of querying DynamoDB tables. And they're sophisticated, very new technique for doing so. And you're going to say, yeah, I'm going to use the DynamoDB object I just used in the US West to cloud. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a series of parameters. And then eventually we're going to take the document client, we're going to apply those parameters. I'm only going to talk for another two or three minutes. So I'm going to supply the name of my table from Dynamo, which is going to be my uh, main test table. Then I'm going to create a key, a key condition where I, I say, well, go ahead, grab item IDs that contain this value. And you can see I'm kind of loading myself up for success because there are a number of these values that already exist. And so I said, go ahead, get me all the items that have that partition key. And what you're going to do is you're going to apply those parameters when I query. And if you have an error, go ahead and put the error into the, the output diff. Otherwise, if that's successful, go ahead and grab the data that you get back, go through all the items, and use a for each, just as you've done last week inside of your JSON. And then from there, you're going to grab the sort key out of that, and you're going to print the sort key back to the screen. And um, so you're going to be running your first JSON package across the cloud. And your sample will load here in you know Southern California, or wherever you're accessing it from, or you know in a ship in the in the Middle East or wherever you're accessing it from, but your data is going to come from that uh, Oregon data center, and so your uh, client sample will have pushed a packet of data of JSON over the internet, and now you are marshalling and parsing that package, just as you have trained how to do, right? And let me say this, you've done a lot of the hard stuff. You've done harder stuff than this, and then you're done. That's how you run a query. So, you know, there's some cool things here, like your key, your partition key is going to get specified, and you're going to have some attribute values that get put in there. And let me say that in the following couple lectures, we're going to be using the query core as a basis, and then eventually we're going to be doing something more advanced where we're going to be, you know, supplying a query parameter. And then you're going to get data back from the internet that's going to write fresh divs based upon uh, the objects that you're going to get back uh, from the cloud. But I think right now some of your goals are kind of watching these videos again and kind of equating yourself with OAuth that comes from Facebook and the NoSQL database that comes from Dynamo and then the, the, the web service that comes from uh, S3, and then also the SDK that kind of pulls it all together. And we'll supply you with some, some other reading materials uh, next class. But that's pretty good for today after these two hours of, of lecture. So see you next time.